these ten components. So think about like what sports. I'll ask you this, Patrick. Mm. What sports encompass the ten components of fitness Ooh. well? Mm. So we talked about at the beginning. Like most people go like super fit, marathon runners or weightlifters. Yep. When you go through this exercise, you go like, holy crap, those guys aren't fit at yeah. all. Yeah. Because a marathon runner, and this is true, the marathon runner can run incre- the best endurance in the world. That's what he's supposed to do. It's where you make his living. But those guys can't bench press a 95 pound barbell. This is true. The, like, um, the majority of them. And this is a strange one. Can't even jump on an 18 inch box. Right. So how fit are they really? Yep. So what sports do encompass all 10 very well? Hmm. We are here because we know the outcomes in our lives are within our control. That taking absolute ownership of how we eat, sleep, train, think, and connect with each other is how we'll optimize our health and happiness. That chasing excellence is how we grab hold of what is possible. Our mission is to live on the run, always chasing, never stop. Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Chasing Excellence. How you doing, Ben? Doing good. Thanks, Pat. Mm, good. Today we're going to um, we're going to take uh, a listener question that I thought you know a, a lot of folks often reach out with um, two minute drill questions that occasionally I will even if they're not conducive to a two minute drill I will still make you answer in two minutes, um, but occasionally I'll, I'll I'll pull them aside and and we'll try to have a full conversation on them and, and that's what this one is and um, roughly speaking the, the the question was about you know we we have and we've talked about the ten components of fitness before and we'll break we'll. We'll, we'll list what those are just for folks who um, either can't remember them or don't know what they are. Um, and the question was about how can we assess each one of these or how can we assess ourselves at each one of these components, right? How, can I, how do I know if my balance is good or how do I know if my strength is good? So is there a movement or is there maybe a workout that we can do really for the sole purpose of saying, okay, well, where am I in this, in this, um, you know, coordination or stamina or whatever else. Um, and so just to start, I'll, I'll just read through, I think it makes sense. I'll just read through the list, um, of the 10 components. Um, we've got cardiovascular endurance, stamina, strength, flexibility, power, speed, agility, coordination, balance, and accuracy. And so maybe to start off, Ben, it might make sense to just give like a really high level overview of what collectively, what are, what are these components of fitness trying to do? Why do we pay attention to these 10? Um, what are their importance? Yeah. So in terms of assessing or measuring your fitness, we have to define what fitness is. And fitness is work capacity across broad time and modal domains. And what that means is, in English, <laughs> it's your ability to do work. Like get a task done across broad time. So that means from one second through one minute, 10 minutes, an hour, and even multi days. Um, so work capacity across broad time and modal domains. That means like anything. So that, so that is um, ability to do Olympic lifts and gymnastics, but it's also like shoveling snow and um, a, a rock march and um, being able to do gymnastics and body weight movements and all the other stuff. So it's really, it's an all encompassing, um, broad, general, and inclusive approach to fitness. These 10 components is one of the, one of the, the, uh, methods we could use to assess our fitness. And the saying is you are as fit as you are capable in each of these 10. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the debate has raged forever in terms of like who is fitter, the marathon runner or the power lifter, the guy that can run a marathon in two hours and 20 minutes or the power lifter that can lift a thousand pounds. And each camp had equal, equal rights to who is fitter because they are both incredible specialists in their singular domains. But when you pull into it and you measure it against the 10 components of fitness, what we realize is neither one of them measure up to the levels of fitness mm. very well. One has incredible cardiovascular endurance, while the other has incredible strength. Yep. Now there's some carryovers to others. The, the marathoner might have some better stamina and the, um, the powerlifter might have some better power, but really neither one of those specialists are fit across the spectrum in the definition that we call fitness. Mm -hmm. So what we could do from this is deduce what is our limiting factors 
from these and you could literally kind of rank yourself. Um, and the idea is the fastest path to overall fitness is find your weakest link and attack that. Mm -hmm. And it basically just kind of relies on the, the law of diminishing returns. If you are a, uh, um, if you go through this exercise and you rank yourself one to 10, 10 being the best across these 10 components, and you find that you're a, um, a nine in three of them, but you are, are a two in three of them, well, you continue to work on your strengths. Strangely enough, what most people do in the fitness world, the runners run, mm -hmm. the strong guys lift. You don't have as much potential to increase your overall fitness. What should happen, and again, this is not for people that are making their living doing these things. Right. If you have a power lift, <laughs> right. you start running five miles a day, they're not going to do very well. But what we're trying to do is create fitness, longevity, health. What we want to do is get the power lifters starting to do more endurance stuff. And we want the endurance guys to do more strength stuff. Now that's the, the two opposite ends of the spectrum. It's easy to deduce, uh, easy to use those as examples, but there's a lot of things that fall in the middle. And that's why we have these 10 components. So, um, we can go through the exercise and kind yeah. of figure out what are the, what are the, the appropriate tests for each of these. Yeah. Love that. So that's what we're going to do today. We'll start from the top, uh, cardiovascular endurance. Okay, so as we go through these and we try to create the test, what we need to do is we need to do the best thing we can. So first we have to do is like essentially give someone some, some, a little definition yep. to what yep. this actually is. Then what we'll do is um, as much as possible, try to isolate this one thing. So what we don't want to do is go like, okay, your cardiovascular endurance is great or it sucks, but actually it's because of another factor that is overriding mm. and clouding the test. Mm -hmm. So um, cardiovascular endurance, this is basically like, think about um, your lungs. It's the easy way to think about it. It's like, can you go long? Do you have a good opportunity to use oxygen as your fuel source? Um, so this is not about... Um, your speed. This is not about your power. This is not about flexibility. Um, so the first thing that kind of pops up when people hear endurance, to me, the easy pick here would be like a 10 K run. Yep. I, I think there's actually a better option though, because if you are a 230 pound male, your 10 K run is going to suck. It doesn't matter how good your cardiovascular endurance is. You're going to be limited by an outside factor that is not cardiovascular endurance, which is your body weight. Mm. So to me, a better option, um, similar to that is, let's say you have bad joints, like your joints would reduce your performance in a 10K row, a 10K run. To me, a better, well-rounded test that could truly deduce your cardiovascular endurance would be what's called um, a relative um, functional power test. Mm. I know not, the word power is in there, but um, <laughs> bear with me. What this is, is it's a get on a C2 bike, yep. get on a stationary bike, any sort of stationary bike, and record your average wattage for 20 minutes. Simple as that. Um, a good score for um, a guy is going to be in the 200s, 300s is great, 400s, you could you could be in the Tour de France. Mm -hmm. um, and um, from there, divide that number by your weight in kilograms. And it's going to, that right there is the relative aspect of this because on a bike, bigger people are going to perform better than smaller people. It's kind of the opposite of running. Yeah. So it's weight specific. This takes into account the weight specific, um, variable there. So I made that sound really confusing. It's really simple. 20 minute <laughs> bike record average wattage. It's very simple. You can just create the screen that just does that. Yep. Then divide that by your weight in kilograms. And that number is a great representation of your cardiovascular endurance. Mm -hmm. Just kind of paint a better picture. If you're um, above a three, you're pretty fit. If you're above 3.5, you're really fit. If you're in the fours, like you're kind of a freak. If you're in the 4.5s, um, you could probably go to the games. If you're a five, you could win the games. Mm -hmm. Got it. And if you're in the sixes, uh, if you're in the 5.5s, you could be in the Tour de France. Mm -hmm. If you're sixes, you're going to win the Tour de France. Mm -hmm. uh, and and pro probably a dumb question, but the pur the purpose of it when you start that is to is to go as hard as you can, holding it, holding whatever that pace is as as as, as high as you can, right, or as fast as you can. 
it doesn't matter how you approach it because it's going to take your average. Right. So some people are going to come out so and come out strong and then um, go fall. hard in the beginning, come out strong and fade. Other people that have done this before know that that's a really bad idea <laughs> Got it. and are going to start off a little bit underneath and then try to climb throughout. Got it. Very cool. Um, I had not heard of that before. Next one, stamina. Um, stamina. Okay. So stamina is kind of the opposite of this and, but in the same category, I know that sounds weird. It is again, how long can you go, but it has nothing to do with your lungs or your heart rate. It has everything to do with, um, your muscles. Mm. So when you hear stamina, this is a, um, they, actually it's so funny that we're talking about this. Um, literally men's fitness reached out to me last night asking for the definition, the, the differences between endurance and stamina. Huh, that's funny. So I think a lot of people get this confused. Yep. Stamina is muscular endurance, whereas cardio, um, vascular endurance is your lungs. It's Got your ability it. to use oxygen. Okay. So the easy one that pops up immediately here is 100 pushups for time. Okay. Like you get a good score on that or a bad score on that, not because you're strong, not because of flexibility, not because of your cardiovascular endurance, but your ability to repeat that muscular movements. Now, the limiting factor there is we're just testing kind of your upper body pushing. Mm -hmm. So we could even kind of like create even a better test than that maybe with like strict JT, which is 21, 15, nine yep. of strict hand 10 pushups, um, strict ring dips and pushups. And maybe that's even a better test, but mm -hmm. then again, you're only getting the pushing. Yep. So maybe the better test again might be Karen, which is 150 wall balls for time. Now you're getting kind of a stamina play. Anyone's done that. It's kind of like shoulders and mm -hmm. your legs kind mm -hmm. of like give out before your heart does your lungs, your breathing. Um, but even that has a lot of breathing to it. Um, I'm giving some options and I'll come finally to my final thing here. <laughs> um, the next option kind of from there is a really cool stamina play is a 400 meter prowler push at half your body weight. Okay. So because of that, your heart rate's going to go up. Yep. It's never going to go to 180, but what gives out is kind of like just the muscles your calves just ache, your quads burn, your midline is heaving. Um, it's a really cool test as well. But to me, that's still Karen, even JT, and certainly the Prowler Push all involve a lot of um, um, cardio, yep. endurance, cardio aspect of that. To me, what I would put in here, just to make it a pure muscular endurance one, it's funny because like people think muscles, they think moving is a static plank hold. Hmm. Just how long can you hold the plank? Mm -hmm. If you're, um, to me, like a novice is 45 seconds to a minute. Um, a trained person is a minute and a half to two minutes. And an advanced person is um, in that three to four minutes. But an elite is, um, you know, and people that train this and try to get better at it. People can hold planks for like, you know, the Navy SEALs, one of the very first things they have you do is hold a 45 minute plank, hmm. 45 minutes. Yeah. That's crazy. Now, if you know anything about those guys that they, they have a lot of stamina, yep. like they can just keep going and going and going. So I think it's a fairly good test for muscular stamina that again, isn't going to be limited by a, 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 a second factor. Yep which is what we're trying to do here. Yep. And just uh, the plank is on elbows or push-up yeah, position plank, choose. or does it matter? Um, yep, you can choose. I'm saying on elbows. Yep. Um, to me, that the other one is a high push-up plank. Yep. Um, but to me, on your elbows, and you hold a position where your midline is tight, meaning no saggy belly button, and that your shoulders, hips, and heels are in a straight line like there was a dowel down your shirt and through your shorts. Got it. Got it. Okay, that was stamina. Next one is strength. So strength is your ability to move external loads. Yep. Um, and maybe, uh, and, um, you know, if it's, an, I shouldn't say that. It's your ability to move loads, right? It's um, contractile potential, but really what it is, is not about potential. It's about literally how much force can you exert against something. So the first one that pops up to me would be um, a back squat. Okay. Um, now the problem with the back squat, and I love it as a test. If I was running the CrossFit games, 
I would choose this as my strength one. Mm -hmm. Um, the problem with it is that you're going to be, if someone is limited by flexibility, it's going to look like strength and it's not Mm -hmm. because they can't get down to achieve the movement. So you have to lighten the loads low enough to where they can achieve the prescribed rep range. So it's limited by something else because of that. I would flip to a second one, which I don't like as much, but because of the third, the the second factor, I would um, switch to a deadlift. Got it. Deadlift requires very, very little anything else other than strength. Mm -hmm. It's probably the purest test of strength that there is. Mm -hmm. You could pick a deadlift, but deadlift doesn't incorporate as much total body strength as a deadlift would. If flexibility weren't in the equation, I might even then turn it into a one rep max thruster Mm. because then you're getting legs and upper body and all the rest. But Mm -hmm. um, to to isolate it to the one factor, I would choose deadlift as the strength aspect to it. Take it. Okay. Flexibility. Um, This to me is the easiest one. It's a, um, it's an overhead squat. Mm. with a with a pvc um if we were able to get a little bit more um challenging from that i would actually move not in load but i would turn it to a one arm dumbbell overhead squat yep um that actually because here's the reason why overhead squat any good physical therapist it is the functional movement screen you know there's the, the gray cook or the gary cook uh um functional movement screen which they have you do all these different things essentially you can pretty much deduce almost every range of motion limitation through the overhead squat. Mm -hmm. Um, The one thing is, is that if you are exceptionally flexible in one area, you can kind of get away with some other things. If you have incredible ankles, it's not really testing your shoulder flexibility. Um, So because of that, um, what I might instead do is a relatively light, call it like uh, 15 pounds for women, 20 pounds for guys, um, one arm overhead dumbbell squat. Mm-hmm. And because of that, there's a, uh, a lot more that's challenged inside of the movement and you can identify for quite a bit more. And is, is the weight just to add a little bit of, um, counterbalance? Like why not just, uh, just literally overhead with nothing in your hands? What does that do? Yeah, you could, um, you could, but, um, it depends on the, um, who's the, um, if you have somebody to assess you, yep. if you have somebody to assess you, um, you go no weight at all, just a, a hand. Yep. But what's going to happen is if you don't have the flexibility, your hand is going to drop forward. Got it. Well, if you only have five pounds in there, um, you're not going to recognize obvious. that. But if you have 20 <laughs> pounds in there, yeah. there's the feedback of like, holy crap, I can't do this. Got it. Got it. That makes sense. Okay. But if you have it. a trained eye watching you, you don't need any weight at all. Right. Got it. Next one, power. Okay, so power, the difference between strength and power, if um, strength is ability, to, is, is force production, power is force production di- divided by time. So okay. how fast can you move a load? So if you think deadlift strength, it would be power clean um, power. Now, that would get, that's kind of like the first choice that pops up would be power, would be power clean. Yet, again, there's... Uh, some things that come into consideration there, like some other things we're going to get to, like coordination, like skill specific, like sport specific training, um, um, like agility and balance and act. There's some other um, neurological aspects that come into the power clean along with third wave adaptations, which is training the actual movement. Yep. So because of that, I would change it from a power clean to a uh, max broad jump, hmm. even like a max um, box jump takes a lot of flexibility. It's a big flexibility. Point. If you yep. can't get below parallel, you're not going to be able to jump on a box very high. Um, even a max vertical jump to me is more technique dependent than a max broad jump. Um, um yeah, no, you know, I'm real time now. I'm going to switch that. I'll go vertical jump. Okay. Um, because the vertical jump will not take into consideration any of the flexibility components that a broad jump would give you credit for. Mm-hmm. So I'll say, um, for power, the number one test would be, um, a max vertical jump. Really simple. Um, measure your max reach, Yep. tag it on a line on a wall, then jump up and see how high you can hit the wall again. Um, and then from there measure the difference between the two. Mm-hmm. Um, good is above 20 inches. Um, really good is above 25. 
great is above 30. Um, and anything above that is kind of like elite level, um, you know, division one athletes, mm -hmm. um, you know, um, the, the best NBA players are in the forties Got it. and there's only a handful of them. Yep. And is that, uh, literally a static standing jump or is there kind of a step into that? Yes. Or what do you, what do you consider nope. legit? There's no step. Feet are, feet are, feet are flat on the ground. Okay. There's no step whatsoever. And from that, um, from that, um, standing position, you just use your arms with this momentum, bend down as low as you want to go and then jump up as high as you can. Got it. Love it. That was power. Next one. Um, is really interesting is, um, Caleb, Caleb, uh, Caleb yeah. Dressel, who is uh, going to be, he's the next upcoming U.S. Um, swimmer. Um, he's kind of, it's kind of bummer that the Olympics aren't happening this year. Um, the reason I know this is because he's a, he's a noble athlete. Got it. Um, but K Caleb Dressel, um, he has a 44 inch vertical jump. He's mm. a swimmer. Yeah. That, those two things so, don't feel like they, um, they're just. So in the history of the NBA, I think there's six players out of a 44 or higher. Yeah. Michael Jordan being one of them. Yep. So there, I mean, it's, it's, he is in rare, he is an incredible athlete. You know, like I said, again, like there is very few people in the NBA in the history of the game that can jump as high as he can. He's a swimmer. And you're like, why the hell was he gets off the blocks yeah. so fast. That's true. How yeah. he comes off the blocks. With. Yeah. Super interesting. Okay. That was power. Speed is the next one. Uh, this is probably, I said, the, this is probably the easiest one. It's, I would go hundred meter sprint. Yep. That, I mean, that's when you think speed, that's what speed is. Usain Bolt is the fastest man alive. He's the, he's the, the most dominant athlete and that he has a world record for the hundred meter sprints. Mm -hmm. That's, that's your speed. Yep. Yep. Simple. Uh, next one is agility. Okay. So agility, if we define it, um, it's the ability to, um, change direction, start, stop and go and all that, um, um, quickly. So for me, the test there is the five, 10, five pro agility, um, which is you have three cones, all five meters apart. You start at the middle cone, um, straddling it. So one foot on either side from there, you, you sprint five meters to the first cone. Then you change direction, sprint 10 meters across to the, um, the other side cone, and then you sprint back through the middle where you started. It's a very short, quick test, which it should be for testing agility. It's mm -hmm. quickness. Um, but to me, that is, uh, that is the best test for agility. You are literally changing 180 degrees um, in both directions, and it's not long enough that you're testing speed um, it's not short enough that you're testing power. Yep. Um, to me, that is the test for agility. Very cool. Next one is coordination. Um, so, so coordination is the, like the ability to, to learn uh, new movements, do a, um, a number of different, um, uh, having a bunch of different, um, body parts and movements happen in sync to create a, um, flowing, functional, productive movement. Um, I, to me, I, I, it's, it's a hard one, hard one because there's not going to be a, um, a standardized test that you can measure up against, but this it, conceptually, um, it would be an obstacle course. Hmm. Uh, if you can get through an obstacle course really well, you are very coordinated. You have a lot of coordination. Um, in the CrossFit world, it'd be something like double unders. Double unders are kind of the, our, our litmus test for coordination. Mm -hmm. It's a, the ability to time your feet and your hands in a um, systematic fashion that produces the end result you're looking for. Mm -hmm. um, and it has nothing to do with your quote unquote other fitness things. It's not about your endurance. It's not about your stamina. It's not about your strength. It's not about your flexibility. It's just how coordinated are you? Um, you, know, you could argue it's accuracy a little bit, but to me, um, double unders in the CrossFit world, but outside of that, I would go, um, kind of in the obstacle course. Fun. Um, next one, balance. Um, and not like obstacle course racing. That's too right. long to test that. Right. right. That's an endurance test first, um, a stamina test second, and then a coordination test probably fourth or fifth down the list. I mean, like literally like an obstacle course. Now the problem with an obstacle course is it could also be testing your speed and power. Yep. Um, so there is other things involved in that. So, um, you know, it, 
it's a tough one. Coordination is a tough one to actually kind of test for. You know, another way would be like, um, <laughs> you know, what? the coordination you go is like any other sport. <laughs> Do a sport outside the gym. Yeah. You know, play basketball. Yep. You know, that's gonna that's gonna expose your coordination. Coordination is a big one for like um, that people would would when they get to this list they go okay but where's the athleticism? Mm-hmm. That's kind of the that's kind of the athleticism one. Like how quickly you pick up new sports. Like go water skiing. You've never done it before. How quickly yeah. can you pick up water skiing? Well, if you're really coordinated, you can pick it up pretty quickly. Go learn to um, ice skate. Yep. You know, go learn, uh, go to a gymnastics hall and how quickly can you pick things up? Yeah, that's a great point. That's a great point. Um, next one, balance. I'm going to just, this is a, maybe a cop-out answer, but I can't see how you wouldn't go with this one, is... Um, um, walk down a balance beam in gymnastics, mm-hmm. turn around, do a, do a one, do a, um, 360 and then walk backwards mm. on the balance beam. Mm-hmm. To me, that's, <laughs> that's doing what it's testing. It's testing balance. Right. There's a reason it's called the balance beam. <laughs> you know, anything else that we bring in, I think is going to, it's going to test is going to encompass something else. Like yep. you say pistol. Okay. But like, yeah. wow, so much flexibility in a pistol. Um, you know, there's just like, uh, to me, you know, even hand, like handstand walking. Okay. So, but yeah, there's lots of balance, but like there's so much sport specific and other stuff that comes into play there. To me, the purity of the balance beam is the test for balance. Yeah. Last one is accuracy. Okay. Accuracy is probably the, the toughest one. I think of all of these. Um, so I'll give kind of like, um, so shooting, shooting a gun, shooting a bow and arrow, like yep. that's the, the, because there's nothing else, right? There's nothing else but accuracy with those. Um, so that is, that would be, that, that's not a bad test. And it's a reason that a sport like biathlon is kind of cool, right? You're testing cardiovascular endurance and accuracy, which is a component of fitness. And yes, it's very specific. It's shooting a, a gun, but those two things combined are a really cool test of a bigger, broader scope of fitness than just one or the other. The actually one's tough because it really, if you, if you have nothing else, you're not going to look, be looked at as a very good athlete. Mm-hmm. You know, if you're a skeet shooter, you have a beer gut, like, <laughs> you know, you're just really good at accuracy. Like, okay. <laughs> like if you're a biathlete, like you're pretty damn fit to like, control your heart rate and then hit a target at X number of meters, whatever it is. Yep. Um, so then you kind of get into like the more sporty type things. It's like basketball, you know, it's like things like that, like lots of accuracy, wall balls, like our sport. Um, but to me, it's, it's something like, and I get that there's a lot of other things that come into play, but um, a snatch takes an incredible amount of accuracy. Mm-hmm. You know, for you to be able to hit the positions and that bar has to land when you're close to your one rep max. And it's not a matter of what that one rep max is. It's just how frequently can you hit it? That's a test of accuracy. Like how consistent can you be with 95% plus of your, um, you know, if you're doing it frequently, it'd be a test of stamina as well. But mm-hmm. um, basically if that, if that barbell is an inch too far in front, you're going to miss it in front. If that barbell is an inch too far behind you, you're going to miss it behind you. That's an incredible amount of accuracy to get a barbell from your shins to over your head within a, a inch and a half span. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, if it's, if you're playing with an empty barbell, there's not as much accuracy at all. You could be off by four or five inches. If you are um, playing with 70%, you'd be off by two or three inches, 80%, one or two, you get that close. Now it's, you gotta be dead on accurate with it. Yeah. So it's a weird one. Um, you know, you can go from like the super specific, um, shooting bow and arrow type thing to the more sporty, like, basketball or something like that to, um, kind of more cross type thing, which is going to be the snatch. Yeah. Um, last question as we kind of wrap up this conversation about the, the 10 components, do you see, or maybe have you, have you gone so far as actually doing it? Do you see value in with either maybe your, your games athletes or, or just the gym athletes of actually going through some kind of process where you do in fact try to assess, measure, uh, improve these components individually like this, or do you feel like, 
the fact that what they're doing is CrossFit, the, the purpose of it in some large way is to attack all of these without needing to do any one of them individually. But is there value in knowing yeah. where each one of your, you know, where your athletes kind of are it's on each really one of these? Really good question. Yes. So, um, so for the regular everyday gym goer, this question comes up, they go, okay, so let's say I'm not good at endurance. I've had a football and a weightlifting program. I come in, I'm not good at endurance. Should I bias my programming towards endurance? And the answer is maybe, but if your goal is just long, you probably don't need to. Yeah. Because what's going to happen is you're creating this GPP program, general, or we're talking about broad general inclusive fitness, a general physical preparedness program. You're going to bring up your weakest link just by default, even if you don't bias them. Because what's going to happen is, yes, you're still going to weightlift three days a week. But now what you're going to do is you're going to also do endurance stuff three days a week yep. because the marginal, the, uh, the, the, the potential for the diminishing returns at the peak where you are, if you already back squat 500 pounds, you're not going to go to a thousand, you know, by doing this program. Yep. But if you have a 10 minute mile, <clears throat> you might get to a seven and a half minute mile, a huge improvement. CrossFit balances out on its own. Now the flip side of that is for the elite athletes who make their living, making sure that they are, they are build their, um, if they have a weak link, they're out. So think about qualifying through the open. Okay. You came in first place in the first workout. You came in second place in the second workout. You came in ninth in the third, and you came in fourth in the, um, in, in, uh, fourth in the fourth, but the last one double unders show up and you can't do double unders and you come in 400,000. You're not qualified. I don't care how good you are in the other ones. Yeah. You need to bias the program to attack your weaknesses. It's a Chris Spieler saying of um, identify your weaknesses, make friends with them, and then beat them to death. Mm -hmm. So um, we do this. We don't break it down just kind of like full disclosure. We don't break it down in terms of these. We break it down in terms of everything that might be tested. Mm. So we might see a 100 meter sprint, a 200 meter sprint. Uh, uh, um, a 400, 800 mile, 5k, 10k half marathon. We break it down by that. Got it. So we don't go, how good are you at running? Right. And similar to that, we go snatch. So, cause there's different people that are good at different things. Katrin's really good at endurance. She's not good at all at the sprint. Yep. We got to bias her program towards sprinting. Katrin's great at cycling snatches. She's not, um, actually she's pretty good at um, cycling um, cleans. Mm -hmm. She's not good at a one rep max clean. Yep. So you got to break it down even farther for the elites. Totally unnecessary for the everyday gym goer, completely necessary for the elite athlete. Got it. Got it. So I have um, another thing. That, so here's kind of a fun exercise is um, these 10 components. So think about like what sports, I'll ask you this, Patrick, mm. what sports encompass the 10 components of fitness Ooh. well. Mm. So we talked about at the beginning, like most people go like super fit, marathon runners or weightlifters. Yep. When you go through this exercise, you go like, holy crap, those guys aren't fit at yeah. all. Yeah. Because a marathon runner, and this is true, the marathon runner can run the best endurance in the world. That's what he's supposed to do. It's where you make his living. But those guys can't bench press a 95 pound barbell. This is true, like, um, the majority of them. And this is a strange one can't even jump on an 18 inch box. Right. So how fit are they really? Yep. So what sports do encompass all 10 very well? Hmm. The first one that comes to mind and I, I've never done this. And so this is just a guess, but wrestling, um, strikes me as yeah. at least favorable thinking about it that way. Um, and I imagine that, yeah. uh, imagine a natural extension of that is jujitsu or martial arts of some kind. Um, I feel like those yeah. are, are probably testing at least an, a good number of these more certainly than basketball or something like that. Yeah. So we go down the list, right? Like go down the list. Does it take cardiovascular endurance championship yeah. rounds or five rounds of five minutes, 25 minutes. So that's on the, uh, yeah, I would say yep. that even with the breaks in there, there's a fair amount of cardiovascular endurance and you go mm -hmm. down like, um, strength. Certainly they're moving. Yep. I mean, they're picking up human beings that weigh 220 pounds, <laughs> yep. some stuff, yep. you know, and body set and like try to push them off of them. Um, stamina, muscular stamina for sure. Just yep. try holding your hands up like this yep. for 25 minutes. Um, so I agree. You go down the list, like, yep. right? flexibility, like incredible yep. flexibility to get in and out of those jujitsu holds. So I 
phasing of UFC. Yeah, I was going to say that that, that, that feels that feels like a natural extension of that too. Yeah. Yeah. So I think UFC. So kind of like cool things like what a lot of people kind of go to is like um, um, soccer. But soccer is missing a few of these things. Mm-hmm. Soccer is missing like you don't. There's not much strength. There's not much strength in soccer. Um, um, and then um, so I think UFC is one. I think rugby is one. Um, hmm. I think hockey is, is one hockey is definitely, um, shorter intervals An average, um, shift is like 45 seconds or something mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. But across a two and a half hour game, yep. there's some endurance for sure. And if you don't have endurance, you're not going to last. Um, and think of the balance, accuracy, coordination, totally. the neurological sides of hockey, yep. right? Accuracy, balance, agility, and coordination. So, um, those are neurological. Those are like, um, um, what most people call like skills that you harness through practice. Whereas the, uh, the first four, um, strength, stamina, endurance, um, and flexibility yep. are, um, more garnered through training. It's like, you got to pound the pavement. You got to run your miles. Yep. Um, you got to lift the weights, that type of thing. Um, and speed and power are the combination of the two. What's interesting. The, the um, sports that we listed there are all, are all contact sports. I wonder what what about that yeah, so, is, is lends itself to this conversation? Okay, so um, another um, one that would be really good, which is kind of like almost a cop out answer, is decathlon. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so right, but yep. um, not tons of strength in decathlon. Definitely power yep. for sure. Shot, but um, I mean massive amounts of power but they're kind of missing the strength aspect of that. Yep. And then when you think about this across the totality of all sports, like what sport in the world encompasses the best? CrossFit. CrossFit. <laughs> Absolutely. That is our sport. We yep. are the sport of fitness. Yep. That is, that is why our sport exists. Yep. Um, yes. Um, you can actually even, um, in terms of um, decathlon, you might even challenge um, flexibility. Mm-hmm. You know, I think there's the high, the high jump, which takes some flexibility, but, yep. um, do they do a pole vault? Do they do the pole vault? Yes, I believe they do. Yeah. So maybe that's a pretty good one. Yep. Um, I could yeah. be wrong, but I think they do. Um, and then from there it's like, okay, there's a single sport. What single sport does these the best? What would be the single workout that would <laughs> highlight these the best? Yeah. That's a good question. I think to me, it would be, um, Go ahead. What do you, what's no, your take? I think we've talked about it before and I, I think it might be, yeah. um, uh, I, I, overhead I squats I mean, and running. Those. What is that? What is that? Yes, um, Nancy, Nancy yes. that's what it is. Yeah. Nancy. Yep. So yep. Nancy, um, is missing a little bit of, um, potentially the, 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 the real it's the, the strength, but it's a not like, it's a 95 pound barbell. Yep. So it's not light. Yep. Um, and you might even say it misses a little bit of the power aspect as well, but I put everything else in there. Mm-hmm. Um, so for those that don't know, Nancy is uh, five rounds of a 400 meter run and 15 overhead squats at 95 pounds. Yep. So you go down the list. Is there endurance in there? Yes. Is there stamina in there? Yes. Yep. Is there, okay, I think it hits a lot of them. Yep. Okay. Um, okay Patrick, next one is then, you like how <laughs> I, I, I have questions for you now? Yeah, you turn it around. Nice. <laughs> what is this? What is the single movement? Like we listed out 10 different movements for, those 10. Yep. But if you were to do one movement, what would that movement be? Ooh, um, the balance one is hard, but I would say right off the top of my head, muscle ups would, well, no, that wouldn't. Mm. No, because it doesn't include, doesn't factor in cardiovascular endurance. So I think you're going to have a hard time finding one that fits all 10. Yeah, that's, yeah. So, um, so what you probably need to do is like, um, just say like, be good with nine. Yeah. And to me, that would be the squat snatch. Squat snatch. Yeah, for sure. So squat snatch, like if you go, if you go the, the list from the bottom up, mm-hmm. coordination, balance, accuracy, agility, power, speed, flexibility, stamina. Well, okay. Where's the stamina? Okay. Squat snatch, but like, yep. do, do a hundred of them yeah. At, yeah. with an empty barbell. Yep. Okay. Um, um, strength. For sure, and then the one you're missing again is endurance. But um, um, you might be able to like say, okay, let's let's how many snatches could you do in uh, an hour? Yeah, 
Um, I remember, I remember like, I still, think to, I still think that's a stamina play, not an endurance play. Yeah, like a hundred years ago, I think I remember asking you what single workout you felt like was one of the, the greatest tests. And I think you answered Amanda and it kind of, that, that pops into my head is, yeah. is squat snatches and muscle ups. So that was when you were working through again faster and you were um, scouting and recruiting athletes. <laughs> Probably. Yeah. Give me a, give me yeah. a metric. Yep. So it was, that's give me a metric. On, yeah. And for a CrossFit athlete, you tell me your Amanda score and I'll tell you how good of a CrossFitter you are. Yeah. You know, two, two of the highest demanding, um, um, neurological or skill movements in our sports, squat snatches and muscle ups, um, done for time. So like, you know, like, you know, who has the, like the guy with the best, uh, the guy, like Rich Froning can do a broken Amanda, mm-hmm. um, you know, in under three minutes. And that's Matt Fraser as well. There's not many other people that can, I think Noah yep. Olson's really, really good at it. Like yep. we're listing the best athletes right. in our sport. Yeah. Awesome. You know, it's, a, you know, it's another interesting kind of like question is, okay, not movements, not fitness really, but yes, fitness. What is the single metric that you get from your doctor <laughs> that you single? Yeah. So people get there, they get their weight, they get their triglycerides, they get their cholesterol, um, you know, blood pressure. What is the single metric that's the best indicator? What's your thoughts? That, that one I'm stumped on. That one you'll have to give me a hint on at least. I would choose resting heart rate. Mm, okay. Um, I think anything else, you know, um, body fat would be up there, but anything else isn't really as much of a metric of, uh, it, it's telling just it, to me that like, it's really hard to have a really low resting heart rate and, um, not have a bunch of other things jump in the good bandwagon. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas you could have high cholesterol and be totally cool and totally kicking it. Yep. Um, and similar to that, the opposite to that is if you have a really high resting heart rate, there's probably other stuff going, uh, um, coming down the pipeline that isn't very good as well. Mm-hmm. What's a good range for resting heart rate? So, uh, yeah. So good. Uh, something in the, in the forties okay. is good really good. That's a, That's an athlete mm-hmm. for sure. Um, something in the fifties is still, still super healthy. Sixties is normal. Um, seventies is, uh, might raise an eyebrow eighties. I'd be really concerned nineties. Like you got to go get something checked out. Yep. Um, I, you know, when I was, um, doing Ironman triathlons, that's the other thing is it can be totally biased for people that do more yep. cardiovascular endurance sports because it's testing how strong, how many times does your heart have to beat to do its job, which is send blood through the entire body and kind of do the whole oil change thing. So if your heart's really strong, <laughs> it gets, mm-hmm. it doesn't have to do it very often. Yep. If your heart's weak, <laughs> you have to do it a lot. Yep. Um, when I was doing Ironman triathlons, my resting heart rate was 33. <laughs> um, which they used to, um, they used to be really worried about when I would go there. And say, uh, I think it's going to be okay. What are you yeah. at? What are you at now? Do you have a sense of that? I'm, um, in the, the low forties. Okay. Um, if I'm really chill, um, not overtrained, not stressed, anything yeah. like that, I can get into the thirties, but generally it's more like a, a 41 to a 44. Nice. Nice. All right, my man. I think that's a good place to wrap up this conversation about assessing cool. the 10 components of fitness. Thank you so much. Thank you to everybody who listens and we'll be back next week. You can get every episode of Chasing Excellence wherever you listen to your podcasts or on YouTube. Until next time, thank you for listening.